In this video, we're continuing with the series of recordings on time value of money, introducing annuities, that is sequential payments of a level amount, which are going to make up our um, thus far relatively easy series of investment uh, problems. So if annuities is something you want to get right in the exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. This is the question which I want us to have a go at. It's rather long. Uh, and there are some options in it. So Mike Mills is retiring today. His company's benefits officer presents Mike with three alternative options for receiving retirement benefits. Option one, an annuity with 15 payments of 180,000 per year with the first payment starting in one year's time from today. Option two, an annuity with 15 payments of 170,000 per year with the first payment starting today. And the third one, 15 payments of 250,000 per year with the first payment starting in five years time from today. And if the interest rate is 8% and assuming that Mills will live long enough to receive all payments under any one of the options, which option has the greatest, uh, greater sorry, present value? Option one, option three, or maybe option two. Um, Notice that I intentionally um, change the order in which the options appear in the uh, answers just to potentially trick you into selecting uh, something which isn't necessarily in um, the normal sequence. Be ready for such a thing in the exam potentially. Okay, we're dealing with annuities here. So that's a, a finite set of sequential level payments, payments of an equal amount. And I'm going to write out over here what you will need to do on the time value of money worksheet in your calculators, on your Texas Instruments calculators to solve these. Uh, we'll be solving for present values. Uh, we're asked which one has the greater present value. So we'll be uh, solving for present values. It's just a case of um, properly inputting these onto your calculator. So option one, let's start with this one. For option one, I'm going to have the following inputs. N is going to be 15. Now, um, 180,000, that's what we're going to now use for PMT. So you're going to input 180,000 followed by the PMT key. Um, I over Y is going to equal 8. That's the interest rate. And there will be no FV, but we'll be trying to compute for PV, CPT, PV. So let's have a look at what these inputs on the calculator provide us with. Obviously, very critical to clear the time value of money worksheet first. So press second, followed by FV, which has clear TVM as its secondary function. And let's get the inputs in. 15 for N, 180,000 for uh, PMT. And Eight for I over Y, computing PV. Well, no surprise here. The calculator displays this as a negative figure uh, because the uh, the PMTs, the future payments, were um, positive. So one million five hundred and forty thousand seven hundred and six, approximately. Okay, let's move on to the second one. So option number two, and this is where it becomes a little bit more complicated because there are 15 payments in option two of 170,000 each. But if you try to use your calculator to compute this in, in, the, in the same way as before, what you've got to remember is that your calculator, when working with PMTs, always assumes that the first payment in that sequence in the annuity occurs one period from today. So the problem is, if you imagine this on a timeline, and this is time zero right now, saying there are 15 payments of 170 each. Well, your calculator assumes that the first one happens at t times 1, which is not necessarily the case. Now, two things you can do, or maybe even more. What you could do is you could tell the calculator, OK, well, the payments are going to be 170,000 each, but in terms of the future ones, those starting um, at t plus 1, there's going to be a total of 14 such payments, which you'll want the calculator to take into account and compute the PV of these, of all these payments, and then 
sort of manually just add add the first one whose present value is 170,000 anyway because it occurs at time one. So that's what I'm going to do first of all. I'm going to input into my calculator the following um, numbers. I'm going to have N of 14. I'm going to have a PMT of 170,000. I'm going to have an I over Y of 8. And I'm going to compute the P of P, uh, CPT of PV here. And whatever comes out, that's not going to be my result yet. I'm going to add on top of that this extra 170,000 to include the first one, which is not captured over here. There's also a way to work around this in a different manner, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Now, to be honest, I don't have to necessarily clear the time value of money worksheet from the previous problem because potentially I may want to retain this i over y of 8, which is sitting in my calculator. So just do 14 for n and make 170,000 my PMT input. Compute PV again, so recompute that one. And as you can see, the answer it's showing me is 1,401,520, obviously with a negative sign, which doesn't surprise me. Now, I want to add 170,000 to that. And because I'm looking at a negative figure on my calculator, you know, adding may be problematic. So what you can easily do is just press the plus minus key that will get rid of the minus here. So you kind of neutralize the minus, see? It's positive now. And just simply add 170,000 to that. Oops, um, I didn't want to have that uh, one over there. So 170,000 again. What's the result? Okay, the total is 1,571,520. Let's write this down. 1,571,500, and that's a one. Uh, 520. Okay, and as you can see, this result is definitely higher than the previous one. Right, let's figure out a different way of solving this. It's, you know, potentially this is an exercise in understanding how your calculator treats annuities. So let me write alternatively. What you could do is you could tell the calculator n is 15. PMT is 170,000, but then what your calculator would do is compute the PV of those 15 inputs, assuming that the first one over here happens one year ahead. However, you know, we are at time zero, so it would compute the PV as a time minus one, so one year before. And then you'd need to manually roll this forward by one period to T0. So let's have a look what happens when you do N15 PMT of 170,000, but also I over Y of 8. So this is going to be the first payment of 170,000, and there are 15 such payments in total. The only thing I need to change over here, because everything's sitting in my time value of money worksheet, I'm going to simply input 15 for N and compute again the PV. So 1,455,000, um, But now I'm going to multiply this by a factor of 1.08. Let's have a look. Times 1.08. And as you can see, the result which comes out is the same as this, 1,571,520. So what we essentially did is computed the time value, um, the present value of the 15 payments, assuming the first one happens one year away from today. That would mean we're at time minus one. And then roll this forward using a factor of 1.08, which reflects the interest rate of 8% to time zero. That's another way of thinking about it, maybe even easier, but you've got to get used to this type of thinking. So now it's time for option three. 
And with option three, we're looking at, once again, um, 15 payments, this time of 250,000 each, but the first one starting in five years time. Okay, so N equal to, um, once again, number of periods here was 15. Um, I over Y is eight. And obviously the size of each payment is 250,000. So these should be the inputs. Um, a lot of, you know, I've, I've already have uh, an eight for I over Y. I actually had an N of 15 just a moment ago. But if you're, you know, if you're worried about confusing stuff on your calculator, then why not just clear the time value of money worksheet? Because I'm not sure what I entered where. So, you know, let's, let's get rid of this. Um, clear the TVM. 15 for N, 8 for I over Y. Now 250,000 for our PMT inputs. Okay, and I'm going to compute PV. Good. When I pressed CPT PV, the answer that came out is 2,139,800 and, well, let's round this up to 870. And the thing is, where on the timeline does this sit? Well, as I told you, when you tell your calculator that there's going to be a series of 15 payments, what it assumes is we're computing the PV at a point on the timeline which is one year away from the first payment. So, first payment equal to 250,000 out of that sequence of 15 is over here. And the result that you've received over here is one period away. So if we know the first payment is supposed to happen five years in five years from today, the PV is computed as a time four. So in order to make this a PV at time zero, which will make it comparable with the other computations, we need to discount this back over four periods, over four years. And you can do this using the TVM, or you can simply divide this number, whatever we've got, 2,139,870, by a factor of 1.08 to the power of 4. Let's see what this gives. I'm going to get rid of the negative sign here by, plus, by pressing plus minus, divide by 1.08, y to the x, to the power of x key, followed by 4, equals... 1,572,868. Let's write this down. 1,572,868. Okay, eight. So which, which of these is the highest? It's definitely not this one. This one's higher. But this one with 1572868 is is the highest of the three options in terms of its present value. So the correct answer in this case is option three, and that's answer B.